So by this video, you already have a very good understanding of Scrappy. Now just to internalize the concepts that we have already learned, we'll be working on a complete real life project of scrapping Amazon.com. We will be scrapping the books department of Amazon and more specifically the collection of books that were released in the last 30 days. Now, if you're following along, you don't have to choose books. You can choose any department on Amazon. I've already created the project Amazon tutorial on PyCharm and have installed Scrappy. If you don't remember how to install Scrappy, you can always go back to my installing Scrappy video. Now we will just start our new project so that we can get rest of our project files. And we do that by going to terminal, just opening up the terminal and just writing Scrappy start project and then the name of the project. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it Amazon tutorial in lowercase and press enter. And this will start our new project and give us the project files that are needed. So now our project has been started. And if we refresh our folder structure, you can see that this new folder contains all of the remaining files that we need. And now it says you can start with your first spider with going to the Amazon tutorial directory. And then it gives us this weird command which says scrappy gen spider, which basically means creating a general spider. So we'll be using both of these commands. So let's first go inside this Amazon tutorial folder and then we'll just write this scrappy and this will create a general spider for us. So we won't have to actually create our own spider by going inside the spider folder. This will automatically create it for us. And now it says example, which is basically the spider name. So I'm just gonna call our spider as Amazon underscore tutorial. Actually, let's just call it Amazon underscore spider. And then it asks us which website do you want to scrap? So we want to scrap amazon.com. So we'll just write that and press enter. And now magically our spider has been created. So if we refresh the spiders folder, you'll be able to see that there is this new file known as Amazon underscore spider. And if we open it up, you can see that the pass function and the class of Amazon spider has been automatically created for us. And now we can just remove this allowed domains line because we don't need it. And now instead of start URLs, just amazon.com, we are going to paste the link that we actually want to scrap. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in our start URLs. So let me just format this a little bit properly so that we can paste more of content on this one line. So instead of amazon.com, I'm just gonna paste this URL, this big URL, and this looks pretty good. And before we go into this parse method and actually start scraping stuff, we need to create some items, which are temporary containers. So what are the items that we want to scrap from Amazon? So there are mainly four items that we want. First is the title, the second is the author, the third is the price, and the last is the image link of this image. So what we'll be doing is that we'll be creating four items over here. So we'll just copy and paste this four times. Let me just paste this four times. And the first thing that we want is the product name. So I'm just gonna, instead of name, I'm just gonna write in uh, product name, product underscore name. And then we are gonna do the same thing with all of these four. So let me just copy and paste this over here, over here, and over here. And now instead of name, I just want to put an author. And instead of uh, this, we want to put in the price. And the last, we need to put in the image link. And now we need to import this items.py file inside our Amazon spider. So we are just gonna write from, not frozen instead, from dot dot items import and we need the name of this class that is Amazon tutorial items. So we're just gonna write that Amazon tutorial items. And now inside this parse method, we'll create a variable and let's call it items. And this items variable will store the instance of this Amazon tutorial item class. So we're just gonna call it Amazon tutorial item and we're gonna put in parentheses to make sure that this is an instance. And now we'll actually start scrapping the items, the four items that we have selected inside our items.py file, that is the name, author, price, and image link. So we're gonna start with the product name. So I'm gonna create a variable, let's call it product name equals to, and we're gonna use our typical CSS selector. So I'm just gonna write response.css, and inside this, uh, we're gonna put in the CSS selector that we want. So now we can go over here and we're gonna use the CSS select a gadget that I've already discussed. If you have forgotten about it, this actually helps us in selecting the items that we want. So if you want to download it, you can just type in select a gadget Chrome and install it from the first link. So I'm just gonna click on this select a gadget and the first thing that I want is all the titles. So I'm just gonna click on this and then we don't want all of the other yellow parts. So I'm gonna click on the parts that I don't want. So I don't want this show results for. So I'm gonna click on this again 
and uh, we don't want this yellow part so I'm going to click on this again and now you can see all the titles on this page have been selected and this means that we are okay. So this is the CSS selector that we want. So I'm just going to copy it from over here and I'm going to paste this inside our CSS selector and now we can just write dot extract and this will give us the name of all the product names and we are going to do this same thing with the product price, the image link and the author. So now let's go with product author. So instead of the name, we are just going to go with author and response.css. And now let's do the same thing with the author. So I'm just going to disable this once and enable it again. Now we're going to click on authors. And again, we don't want all of this stuff. So I'm going to click on it again. And this looks pretty good. We have selected all of the authors. Actually, we haven't selected all of the authors because this is not selected. So let me just click on it again. And now this is selected, but all the other stuff is also selected. So right click on it to make sure all of this other stuff is not selected. All right. So this looks pretty good. All of the authors have been selected and all the unwanted parts have been deselected. So now this means that we have to copy all of this stuff from here and paste it inside our CSS selector. I know this is pretty big and that is why where the selector gadget comes in handy. You don't have to make these decisions on your own. So now we can just write dot get over here and this will work for us. And now the time is for let's remove this pass and the author name has been done and now we need the price. So we are just going to do the same thing response dot CSS single quotes. Let's go back to a selector gadget. Deselect it once. Now we're going to write. Let's come over here and now this is selecting for us the price and I also want this uh, sense part. All right, so this has selected all of the prices, but I don't want all of the prices. I just want the hardcover price. So I'm going to deselect all of these items from here. So let me also deselect this. And now if you scroll down, you can see that only the prices of the hardcover are being selected. So I'm just going to copy and paste this from here inside our CSS code and add dot get. All right, and now is the time for the image image links. So I'm going to create again another variable and we're going to call it product underscore image link equals to response dot CSS. I'm learning from a mistake. So I'm going to put in single quotes and dot get before so that I don't have to scroll on the right hand side and paste all of that stuff and then write dot get. So I'm going to use my CSS selector again. So disable, enable and let's go to our image links. And as you can see, all the images have been selected and there are no problems. So we're just going to copy this CF markup from here and paste this inside our CSS selector. And now I just realized that I've used dot get instead of dot extract. Now dot get and extract underscore first are the same, but dot get and dot extract are not the same. If we want this dot get to behave in the same way as this dot extract, we instead of dot get, we need to write get all. But just for the sake of clarity, I'm not going to use dot get at all. I'm just going to replace all the dot gets with dot extract. So let me just go over here and replace both of these with dot extract. And now what we will need to do is we need to add the text parameter to it for because right now this will only extract the HTML tags, but we only want to extract the text. So what we are going to do is we are going to add another colon colon and add a text value over here and this will make sure that the whole tag doesn't get extracted and only the text from this tag gets extracted and saved in the product underscore name and we're going to do the same thing with the second variable but because we are using multiple classes for the css selector that is why we can't just add this text at the end we actually have to write dot css and then inside these parentheses we can add the value of text Obviously, they needs to be enclosed in the single course. So I'm just going to add that and then the same thing with the third variable. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in the third variable. And then in the last line that is product underscore image link, this won't actually extract the image. This is just selecting the element that has the image. So for example, if we go back to our Amazon example, right click on the image and click on inspect element, you'll be able to see that there is the CF marker at the end. And this is basically selecting this image element but the image that we want the image link that we want is actually inside this src that is the source attribute and we want this link so what we are going to do is we are going to add an attribute over here and how do you do that you just write colon colon and then atdr and then we want the attribute of the source so we are just going to write that 
And now that you have extracted all the four values, we are going to store them inside their individual temporary item containers. And how do you do that? It's pretty easy. You just write items. And then over here, we are just going to write product name. So let's just write product name. And then this will be equal to the product name valuable. So this product name is actually the variable in which our scrap data is being stored. And this product in which uh, I have misspelled, then this product name is actually the name that we have given inside our items.py file. And now we are going to do that with the all the four values and just to save time, I'm just going to paste all of the four values over here. And then we just need to yield the items. So I'm just going to write yield and then items and this will complete our code. Now we just need to run the scrappy and see whether it works or not. And one last thing I want to do is actually change this name of Amazon underscore spider because it's just too big. Now before we run a spider, I just want you to tell you that a program might not work. Don't get worried, it's okay. If you have scrapped Amazon before, then it's not going to work. But if this is your first time scrapping Amazon, then the above code will work. The reason for it's not working is that Amazon puts on restrictions when you're trying to scrap a lot of its data. So what we are going to do is we are going to bypass those restrictions by something known as user agents and proxies. But before we get into both of that, which we'll cover in the next two videos, I just want to start this program and show you the error that we get and actually show you a little bit of user agents and a preview of what's going to come in the next video. So let's actually run our program. So let's actually run our program by opening up the terminal and what we'll do is we'll go inside our project folder and then over here we're just going to write the command that you already know to scrap our website. We're going to write scrappy crawl and then we're just going to write Amazon which we just changed over here. And then we are going to press enter and my scrappy will work because I've already implemented and I've removed those restrictions. So if this doesn't work for you, don't freak out because I wanted to show you guys a working example of this. That's why I have bypassed those restrictions. So if I scroll up a little bit, you'll be able to see that we have all of the values that we want. We have the product author, we have the product image link, we have the product name, and lastly, we have the product price. So our scrappy is working properly. Now, if you just want to test out whether your uh, code is working or not, and it is showing you some kind of an error when you are running the program. So what I want you to do is you want, I want you to open up the settings.py file. And when you open up this settings.py file, I want you to find this user agent line that is over here. And just below this line, I just want you to copy and paste this below this 18th line. And I just want you to, instead of this uh, Amazon tutorial, I just want you to put this new value. Now, where are you going to get this new value from? You can just go to Google and type in Google bot user agent and then check out this website developers.whatismybrowser.com. And when you open it up, it's the first link over there. And you can just paste it over here and then run the program again and it should run perfectly. Now I'm going to go into what is this user agent and what I just pasted over here in the next video. And then in the video after that, we are going to go into proxies, which is another method for bypassing the restrictions of Amazon. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.